Welcome to Taking Stock. I'm Amanda Lang. Coming up on the show, a special focus on the agricultural economy of Canada. With an eye on homegrown problems and export opportunities, what can the government do to support the sector? And from demographics to climate change, the risks confronting Canada's farmers are real. Plus, our fertilizer industry is in the sights of emissions reductions targets. Can we shake it up without too much fallout? That's all ahead. But first, Canada's agriculture sector is big and growing with opportunities and challenges. Here's a look by the numbers. According to StatsCan, what it calls the agri-food system in Canada is big. At $143.8 billion in 2022, it's 7% of the country's GDP, employing 2.3 million people, meaning one in nine jobs is in agri-food. Primary agriculture is worth $36.3 billion, employing almost 250,000 people, while processing that ag is $33.7 billion and creates 323,200 jobs. Meanwhile, food wholesalers and retailers is worth $32.8 billion. That's 1.6% of the country's GDP and almost 700,000 jobs. Sales by farms hit a record high in 2022 at $87.7 billion. That's an average annual growth rate of 5.6%. Size matters in agriculture. The largest 10% of farms accounted for about two-thirds of that revenue. Processing food is the largest manufacturing sector in the country. It represents 17% of manufacturing GDP and 18% of the jobs. Like other sectors, agriculture has its challenges, and that includes demographics. The country needs 30,000 new farmers by 2033. 40% of farmers are set to retire in the next 10 years. And tackling greenhouse gas emissions presents a major challenge for farms. They produce 10% of Canada's total emissions each year. But there's also great opportunity ahead. The global population will grow to 9.7 billion by 2050 and demand for food is expected to rise 26%. Well, it seems as though there are plenty of opportunities ahead for Canada's agricultural sector. The real question might be how best to capitalize on them. Mary-Claude Bibeau is Canada's Minister of Agriculture and Agri-Food. Thanks for being with us, Minister. It's my pleasure. Thank you. So obviously, as a minister, you can help shape some of those uh, setting the table for seizing opportunity. What do you see as the role of the federal government when it comes to Canada's agriculture sector? Well, Canada is already recognized as a leader in innovative and sustainable agriculture. And obviously, we want to uh, keep this position. We are investing significantly in research and innovation, particularly in the face of the climate crisis helping our farmers to reduce the emissions, uh, to sequester more carbon. And this all uh, also helped them to have a soil that is uh, healthy, therefore being more resilient in the face of, you know, some droughts or, or even floods that are happening, unfortunately, more often than mm -hmm. before. That which sort of gets to the security of supply question. Uh, we know with extreme weather globally, and as we've seen recently with events like the war in Ukraine, that we can see dis supply disruptions. Uh, where do you think Canada stands at the moment on its food security? Are, are we relatively secure? And how do we balance that against the need to export and export a lot? Well, we are blessed here in Canada with all the natural resources, the water, the knowledge uh, we have. And actually, the world is uh, turning to us to... Uh, for their food security so yes we do produce significantly more than uh, we can eat so, and uh, it's very important to keep the borders open because obviously we do we have to make some uh, exchange we produce uh, way more uh, cereals uh, or meat than we than we he eat here and uh, so keeping the borders open and uh, trade in agriculture and agri-food is extremely important and in Canada is really a leader and, and known as a trusted partner, especially in our times, you know, when there's a war, uh, countries are looking to us because they know they can, they would have, uh, they will have very high quality food mm -hmm. uh, from Canada and from a, a partner they can trust. We know, obviously, that uh, that our agricultural sector represents uh, one of the big emitters when it comes to industry. It's not a small player in terms of reducing our emissions. Uh, how, do, how will that really unfold, in your view, uh, without putting too much pressure on this sector to do what it needs to do? Yes, actually, the emissions uh, coming from the ag sector represents 10, 10 percent 
uh, in Canada. Mm -hmm. And farmers are already very committed to, to do their very best to reduce emission. And then once again, reducing emission makes them also more resilient. So we have put in place in the last years for $1.5 billion uh, agri-environmental programming. We are investing a lot in research and innovation again, but also providing financial incentives for farmers uh, to accelerate the uh, the uh, adoption of the best practices like cover cropping, rotational grazing, a better management of the fertilizers as well. Mm -hmm. We have subsidies for the purchase of uh, eco uh, energy efficient technologies, uh, biodigester, grain dryer, uh, eco -ener energetic uh, eat, uh, eating uh, system as well. So we are providing. Uh, significant support as well to uh, to our farmers for them to adopt more quickly the best practices and uh, the new technologies. We don't have a lot of time for what is a big subject, but supply management is a recurring question in this country. Is it keeping us from innovating the way we might? Do you see a future without supply management? I think supply management is extremely important. First, we it, it is a social contract that we have agreed to more than 50 years ago now. So our farmers in the dairy, poultry and egg sectors have developed within this frame, but still the system uh, is m built in a way that uh, encourage uh, and promote uh, innovation. Supply management, I think it's an important part of our food security in Canada. It's an important part of the rural vitality uh, of, of our communities as well. and. You know, after 50 years, they have developed within this system. Uh, and I think it's, uh, it's the strength for Canada. While we are also supporting significantly all the other sectors who are exporting right. and uh, with the Indo-Pacific strategy, for example. Minister, we've got to leave it there. We appreciate your time today. Thank you. Dr. Claude Bibeau is Canada's Minister of Agriculture and Agri-Food. Coming up, surging global demand for food should position Canada's agri-system well if it can grapple with a few very big challenges. Stay with us.